Hi, I'm Cliff Gratz, one of the trainers with Neodent. Today we're going over the Neodent Grand Morris Guided Surgery System. We do notice that we have a, a series of sleeves that are placed or glued into this guide when this thing is created, and they are color coded. So if we have a narrow or magenta sleeve, it will only place a 3.5 diameter implant. We're gonna today be working with the regular sleeve, which can place a 3.5, 375, 40, or even a 4.3 diameter implant. Most of the stuff done with the Grand Morris guided surgery system is gonna be done with this blue sleeve, and that's what we're gonna show today. We do have an option in the posterior for even our green guided sleeves as well, and that can place a five or six diameter implant. So starting with this blue regular sleeve, we're gonna to go to our first drill, which is our 2.0 twist drill. Right, Just like our conventional kit, we're going to start with our 2.0 drill and we're going to pick up this spoon or handle that's also color coded blue to match our guided surgery sleeve. This spoon or handle is placed in inside the sleeve of our guide and then we're starting with our 2 millimeter twist drill. We want to just start this drill into the handle and get it situated with a very passive fit and then obviously with irrigation and our drill set at 800 or less RPMs. We're actually gonna drill two on the side of our guided drill here, 11 and a half. We're doing this today because we're using a 4.3 by 11 and a half implant, okay? With our guided surgery system, there's a plus 11 added to our drills. This is because of the offset on our guided surgery sleeve at nine millimeters and then placing the handle on top adds an additional two. That makes us our plus 11. There is an option to also do an offset where there's thicker tissue to actually do an offset of a 11 versus a nine on our guided sleeves, okay? So our first drill was that two millimeter twist. We took that down to 11 and a half, and now we transition to our second drill. Just like our conventional kit, we're going to the 3.5 diameter drill. I'm gonna place this into my handle passively fit this down into our spoon start our osteotomy it's really good that if you can to do a pumping motion that gets water or irrigation down in and along the side of our drills to keep those drills cool and not heat or necrose the bone and then we're transitioning to our third and last spoon which happens to be a 4.3 and we're placing our 4.3 drill into the handpiece all of these drills though they do indicate that it's a 4.3 drill, it's actually undersized. So it's not a 4.3 diameter. I wanna get my drill passively placed again down into my spoon, a little bit of a pumping motion and I get this guy down to 11 and a half. And where we've drilled with our guided surgery system to that 11 and a half depth is where our implant is actually planned and placed in the surgery. So now I wanna to transition to the implant itself and I need to use the latch type driver, okay? We have to use this driver because it has these wings or flanges on the side here that hold our implant from the packaging. We're gonna give this guy a half a turn. And we should be able to pull our implant up and out of the sleeve. And we're gonna do a breakaway on the top here with the plastic and our implant has these squeeze triggers on either side of it, so that's anti-rotational. You can see my index finger and my thumb squeezing or holding that implant so that it doesn't rotate. And I simply wanna stab and grab with my implant driver and make sure that I'm flush into the implant, right? And then I can remove that from the sleeve. So because now we're placing our implant, we wanna change the program from 800 RPMs we want to move this over to Newton centimeters and set this at 20 or 35, whatever your preference is. But this is always set around 30 RPMs to spin this implant. So our 4.3 by 11 and a half GM helix implant is going to be placed down through the sleeve. I'm stepping on the pedal, letting the implant grab into the osteotomy and I'm watching that vertical stop on the side of our, our implant driver advancing 
down and I want to stop just short of the sleeve. So I want to just gently pull up and remove my implant driver from the implant itself, disengage. We're going to finish our implant manually with the implant driver that has a square hone on the top that fits our torque wrench. So just prior to doing that, I want to make sure our neodent torque wrench is set up properly. I want to be able to read neodent on the top of our wrench. I want that bar facing towards me and I want to make sure that the arrow on the end of the wrench is towards to tighten. Okay. On the underside, I have the square portion of the wrench where I can insert the driver for the implant. If I have difficulty placing that driver into the implant itself, I can always disengage it from the torque wrench and place that manually down through the sleeve and make sure that I feel there's a positive seat with my driver into the implant itself and then drop our wrench down on top. And now I'm holding just the teardrop on the end of the wrench and I'm advancing the implant being careful that I'm watching the vertical stop on the side of my implant driver to butt up against the sleeve. And then I want to place one of those dots and finish my implant off with the implant right up against the buckle. And now I can remove the guide as well and see where my implant's placed. Mm -hmm.